Back and forth, back and forth. But this week, okay, the defense stepped up. Offense was really, was really slacking. But it was a good defense we played, though. I like the scheme. I like the scheme of them. It made, it made it tough on us. But I'm just happy I was able to face it. So not, next time, going against it, I'll be good. Shador Mick Miller, Fox 31. First part, two part question. One, how would you rate your uh, Coach Prime shuffle or your prime time shuffle after you scored that rushing touchdown? And two, you guys set a, the school set a record with over 53,000 people in attendance. That's the largest crowd yeah, in 15 crazy. years. What does it mean? What was it like to play in front of this crowed? It felt like it was at the spring game again. So yeah, it was, but it was a little red. You see, I seen a picture when the stands was full of red a couple years ago. I don't know when that was, but I seen that. This year looked totally different. So our fans came out support. Um, oh, and the dance, you know, it's in my blood. So I give it 10 out of 10. I really think I did better than him, honestly. <laughs> Shadur, Kyle Newman from the Denver Post. Uh, obviously, offense made a statement last week. What kind of statement do you think you and the offense made this week in the home opener? Statement to who? You talking about to the people or to ourselves? <coughs> For the critics, they're going to hate regardless. They found a way to hate on us last week, and we was throwing it last week. <laughs> so so this week, of course, they're going to hate, but we're not really too concerned about that. We understand where we got to grow and uh, get better at. So I'm excited that we went through this and we was able just to stick together and find a way to put up points on the board, but it's unacceptable. We can't do that again, though, and put that much pressure on the defense. So it was like the offense showed the offense didn't show up as early as the defense did. So good football, though. They had our backs. It's the brothers right there. Hey, Sean, real quick, sorry. Just wanna, this is Xavier Weaver, 10 catches, 170 yards. Taj Austin, Dang. one and a half sacks. Sorry, y'all. Go ahead, Sean. <laughs> Shadur, Sean Keeler, the Denver Post. You talked about last week leaving plays on the field, and you mentioned some things you want to clean up. How many did you leave on this one? What grade do you give the offense relative to what it could be? Given? What grade you get offense? We ain't, we ain't do what we are supposed to do. Mm -mm. Then I can't even grade us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was real bad today. I ain't going to lie. It was bad. A lot of mental errors. Uh, a lot of misreads, misdrows. I missed him on one dig. But we just got to be able to just start faster and be able to just lock in quicker. So whether that's mentally, understand that going into practice and get everybody together and round them up and tell them, you know, what time it is and we got to, but we, at least we didn't do one thing this week, though. We didn't have a delayed game coming off sideline. We worked on that in practice. Mm -hmm. no so it was a little faster. But the tempo of the offense, it wasn't, it wasn't as how it's supposed to be. But I'm happy that it's good and bad that came from this. Um, this question is for Taj there. Um, Jack Carlo of Buffalo's Wire. Um, at least on the defensive <laughs> front, you guys did a better job stopping the run. Just wondering if you could speak to that a little bit. Uh, I feel like we did way better than last week, so I just – like as a defense, we just got to keep stacking days and getting better because we still had a few assignments that we messed up on that we can get better and correct. So we just got to keep stacking days. Oh, and I saw you on the news. I seen you on the news. Yes, I seen you on the news. I saw you on the field. <laughs> <laughs> now, Darius told me, he was like, oh, you know she be in the, um, in the press conferences. I didn't know that. So I turned on my TV. First time I watched TV, I see you on there. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, Joe Rico, My Life Sports Radio is the final word. My question is for Xavier. Hey, another 10 catch day. Um, you know, you're making a big name for yourself. And can you talk a little bit about the receiving corp? And I thought Shador's would be a little humble with 393 yards passing. I think you're doing pretty well if you can call that a bad day. <laughs> now, I say, uh, you know, we, we got higher standards. You know, he said the standard for 500, almost 600 yards. So that 300 ain't nothing to him. But... Our receiver core, our receiver core is, is great, you know. It's hard to stop all of us. We got too many weapons on the field at once, so it's hard for the team to play man. If they want to play man, it's over with, you know, so they gotta drop eight. So we we see we practice this coverage all, all week and we just had to get a feel of it and get rolling. And once it started rolling, we ain't stop. Go ahead, Romy. This is Xavier, uh, Romy being CBS Colorado. Uh, what is it like having Shador as your QB and how does he able to just get so many guys involved every game? Oh, really, it starts in practice. You know, um, if, if, if he don't like a certain look or if he don't like a certain way you ran something, he's going to come tell you, stop the, whole, stop the whole practice and come tell you. So it's really just the connection we build in such a short amount of time. And it's, 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 
it's getting better. Like I can say, it's getting better, and we still got multiple games left. That's it's only gonna keep growing. Shadur, you had to navigate a lot of traffic in the backfield today. There are some plays when maybe another quarterback would surrender, but you try and keep extending it. What's going through your mind there, and kind of what's your mentality with that? That long offseason in the weight room. Coach Mo got my legs strong, man. So, and Coach Lou talked talk to me about it over and over and over this summer. So that's when I really, that's when I see the uh, weight room really, it really helped on the field today. So it's like, it's hard. Making one guy miss that that's a, that ain't nothing. That that's gonna happen. Like you've seen in that the one they call incomplete. You've seen it. But no, nah, it's really the weight room though. It's really the weight room. And we we ain't, we don't really I don't really have too much quit in me like that. And I'm just not going for that. Everybody's regular people to me. And me versus them, I know I'm better. Ariel or pseudo nine news. Question really for any or all of you. Um you guys had Quite a reaction to your win last week, which was really kind of us against the world. What is your reaction this week when you've now put two two and zero oh against uh, really up against there? I feel like we know what type of group we got. We just got to keep staying hungry and stacking days. And I feel like the sky's the limit for our team. What'd you think? Oh, <laughs> nah. I feel like getting a second win. Grateful, appreciative of it. But, you know, whenever you coming off a high, like, as in we went in, everybody's talking about us and stuff like that, we got to be able to lock in and stay focused. So that's really, that's really where the second game came in to where we were able, okay, we won. Everybody's talking about Colorado. Everybody don't believe us. Now they're believing and stuff like that. So now we got to be consistent. So the fact that we was able to go out there and play good football, uh, the defense was able to step up for us, and the offense took its time to get started. It just shows us like our teammates and how we are for each other, and that you know when times get tough, we can lean on each other. Jake, go ahead. Jake Schwanis, DMVR. Question for Taj: You guys didn't have any sacks last week. What was it like to come out and have the game you did and just perform overall? Um, I feel like it was a lot of fire for all of us as a unit because obviously it's not good when you have a whole game and nobody on the D line gets sacked. So this week I felt like it was real, real personal for us, and I feel like we had to achieve our goal. We just got to keep stacking, Dave. For any and all of you guys, this was your first experience playing in this Nebraska-Colorado mm -hmm. rivalry. I know your coach had told you all week it was personal. Were you guys able to really buy into this rivalry, and what did it feel like out there? It was extremely personal. We go out there, warm up. You got the head coach for the other team trying to stand in the middle of the buff. Like, it's okay if, if like, a couple players do it. It's fine, you know. Like, you just... Enjoy the scenery, but when you got the whole team trying to disrespect it, then I'm not, you know, I'm not going for that at all. So I went in there and disrupted it. So they knew off rip, like, nah, this, the Buffaloes mean, mean a lot to me. And personally, that's what I say in pregame. And that's when I knew it was just extreme disrespect. And that's why it was, the coach, the coach said a lot of things about my pops, about the program, but now that he want to act nice, I don't, res I, don't, I don't respect that because you hating on another man, you shouldn't do that. So it was just all respect was gone for them in their program. Now, I like playing against their DC. I like playing against them, but the respect level, it ain't, it ain't there because you disrespected us first. Xavier College, do you have anything to say about it? I'll say, I'll go off what he said pretty much, yeah. Like when he told us the personal, we did our homework and seen why he meant that, why he said that. But yeah, it was a lot of disrespect going on. I remember pregame, we was in the middle huddling up. They punting the ball into our, almost hit our head coach in the head. So it's like, yeah, it's personal after that. Like, we wanted to run the score up for real. We ain't do what we really supposed to do. There you go ahead. Uh, Nikki Edwards, CU Sports Report. Last week, we saw a halftime speech from Coach Prime that made you want to run through a wall. This week, what did he say in that locker room during halftime to get you guys in the zone and ready for the second half? Uh, he just pretty much told us, like, it's personal. Like, you wouldn't want nobody coming in your house and doing whatever in your house, right? So it's personal for us. And I feel like we approached it that way every day in practice this week, and the results, like, showed itself. I was I was in the locker room, you know, getting my back a little massage a little bit. I held on to the ball a little bit too long first half. So I missed the speech, kind of. I missed that. But... It was definitely that, and it was like, we're not going like that, and we're making those players and that team look good for self-inflicting mistakes. We had a lot of penalties on offense that we can't afford to have. We had intentional grounding, missed a couple of throws. Like, it was bad. 
So I don't feel like it could get any worse than that. Than when we, the worst first half of football we ever played. Okay. Time for two more, go, Brian. Shador. Uh, can you talk about Chick? You know, he's a guy that we, we mm -hmm. didn't hear a whole lot about during camp. We heard a lot, a lot about the other guys. Mm -hmm. Then he comes out and has a big game today. Is this something that you saw out of him throughout camp? Yeah, no, nah, I knew Chick, Chick's funny. I know he's going to. One thing about the receiver group, it's all, it's all family. And the first thing we did when we all got together is tell him, like, hey, don't be in your feelings about nothing. This may be your game. This may not be your game. Everybody got to stay level-headed. When you got a lot of talented guys, you know, some people got to wait their turn. So that's just the whole thing when you when you handling uh, that many talented players in one room. So Chick knew his time was coming, and he told me, "I got you, bro." Like each receiver, they we talk different, so to where I know they're ready and they're focused. So Chick worked with him, working with, worked with him over and over and over. So now he got the exact look that we wanted, and he um, did what he was supposed to do. Hey, Max Olson from The Athletic. Question for Shadur and really all you guys. What's going through your guys' head with one second left and the fans are rushing the field, and how did you get out of there? Man, I'm like, this is my first time somebody rushed the field, so I'm excited yeah. for it. <laughs> then it was bittersweet because I started getting beat up in there, so it, 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 it looked fun, <laughs> but I'm telling you, stay out of that. And they, and they try to tell me, they try to tell me, hey, go in the locker room. But me being hard-headed, I'm like, nah, I want to enjoy this. Uh, so... It was, it, it was a bittersweet moment. Yeah, it hurt a little bit. Get a ice tub. <laughs> Great win. Started off slow. Played like hot garbage in the first half. Uh, probably five minutes left in the first half. We started picking it up quite a bit and doing what we we're capable of doing. Um, hats off to the defense and uh, how they were steadfast today. They atoned for the disappointment that we were last week defensively. We still gave up a few plays. But overall, I think we forced uh, three was it three turnovers, um, interception, I think two fumbles, so three turnovers, and uh, we didn't give up explosion to the end. So I'm, I'm really proud of the defense. Special team stepped it up. We didn't have nothing crazy that transpired, and uh, Jace Feely is who he is. He's unbelievable. I'm kicking the ball in. He kicked the ball, kicked off in the end zone, and uh, uh, we punted the ball really well, too. I think we got a couple inside the 10. As well, coaches did a great job. They called a great game. Some things that they're calling, we're just not doing what we're capable of doing, and they get the blame for it. But the kid is just in the wrong gap or not feeling like he's supposed to or not blocking or uh, running the wrong route. So overall, it was a win. To just think that we played like we played and we won by that margin, that's a pretty good feeling for any coach. And I think for you all to see what we're capable of doing. Um, I keep saying, more and more young men as well as coaches are relieving. I think we're up to probably 80% now of young men in that locker room as well as staff and support staff truly believing what we're capable of doing. It's not believing in me, it's believing in what we're capable of doing. That was the question I posed um, to the gentleman last week. It wasn't about me, it was about the young men and what we possess. Let's go. Ariel. Ariel Orsuto, Nine News. Uh, after last week's win, the uh, the talk was just about truly believing and really right. kind of the us against the world mentality. Right. After this week's win, it was a very different type of win, more decisive type of win. Uh, what is the mentality this week? Um, we didn't just want to win. We wanted to dominate. In the first half, we weren't dominant. In the second half, we got it together, and uh, we began to dominate. But we wanted to really impose our will because the whole theme of the week was this personal. Um, one of the funniest moments in the darn game after Shador took his helmet off after he made the tremendous scramble. It was like a Heisman type play. And I went over and said, you cannot do that. You cannot take your helmet off. He said, dad, it's personal. And I just laughed. I just <laughs> bent over and laughed my butt off because it was in the moment and I was really upset. And he broke, he, he broke the monotony up with it's personal. So they really took it to heart, that whole theme of the week. Yes, sir. Hey, Coach McMiller, Fox 31. How you doing, man? You been better? I'm doing a little bit better. Hey, man. Um, when we met with you in the spring and we first asked you about Shador, you told us that growing up his nickname was Grown. Yeah. We just met with him, and he said when Nebraska came out, Matt Rule and the, the team, they had a meeting you know, on the Buffalo, and he went in there and disrupted, and he said, you know, he talked about my pops, and I took that personally. That's right. 
in the second half, he leads your offense after a slow start. As a father and as a coach, how proud are you when you watch these moments where he takes leadership upon himself and represents not only the program, but also your family in these moments? And also, how would you rate yeah, his prime time? Yeah, one at a time. I'm 56 years old. I can't be, I mean, right, right. One at a time, man. One at a time. Give me one question at a time. I can't, I can't remember all this stuff. As, as a father, um, I'm really proud of him. I'm proud of Shiloh as well, as Junior as well, doing what he does for social media. Um, he's uh, very mature. He's always been very mature, very astute. He studies his butt off, and he's prepared. Um, I'm not happy that well, we surrendered seven sacks, I believe, today. But uh, once we got it going and, and, and he got his rhythm, he performed greatly. But to take the onus on himself when someone talks about me, that's, that's, how, we, that's how he grew up. If someone talked about my kids, I handled it. That's the expectation of a, of a father, not a baby daddy, a father. I'm a real father, and I take pride in that. And uh, I try to teach my sons the, the same. But overall, as a coach and as a father, I'm truly proud of, uh, of all three of my sons and what they contribute on a daily basis. Yes, sir. Just talk, man. I get you. Uh, just your thoughts on seeing the scene out there, both before beautiful. the game, during, and then afterwards. Um, uh, beautiful. Uh, a lot of this stuff is new to me, you got to understand. So I know I've been to the highest level in World Series as well as Super Bowls. but. On the, in the coaching aspect, in power fives, just to see, I think it was a sellout last week. I think it the most broken attendance record, I believe, for TCU and uh, what we accomplished today. Uh, and to see that many people that came to see us perform, it was tremendous. That, not just the, the number, but the energy and the love and the um, expectation. Um, I love that. I really did. I'm driving over to the set um, for the big noon uh, kickoff. It was phenomenal. Just feeling the, the energy of the, the student body as well as the fan base here was unbelievable. That's, that was my first time. We know we didn't get to really feel it in the spring because it was snow. I didn't want to go out there and it was cold. So, you know, I didn't really get to, to feel it. But we felt it today. And I'm pretty sure the kids uh, are going to have a, a good time. Hopefully they go get a nap and then wake up with some energy and they can celebrate with their families. Great question, though. Yes, sir. Randall Williams, Bloomberg News. I've spoken to a number of local business, local businesses, economists, and no one has quite been able to measure the impact that you've had on voters since you arrived here. Yeah. Can you talk to me about that and what you expect? Well, I think we're, we're going to measure the impact that we have for voters. <laughs> That's business. So we're going to measure the impact. Um, it's hard to say what that means and what that is, we're just happy. The thing about it, I'm not really talking, thinking about the economical impact. Really, I'm thinking about the social impact. Um, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing more African Americans um, than I've ever seen before, uh, sprinkling throughout the stands and the stadium and at restaurants and everything, and I, and I absolutely love it. The thing about sports, the thing about um, competition, when Shador is out there doing what he's doing, and Travis and Xavier and all those guys, they, they're not black Colorado Buffaloes. They're just Colorado Buffaloes. And we all come together, and I think we're, we're bringing people together. We're uniting, and that's the part of it that I adore. I truly do. Thank you. Thank you. Coach. Brian Howe from the Daily Camera. What's going on, boys? You had a couple guys like, like Chick and uh, Cam that didn't yeah. play a whole lot last week, but had big impacts today. Yeah. Does that help with that belief that you know, more guys believe when they know that they're going to get their shot? Well, you got to practice. You got to practice and, and prepare in order to get your shot. You can't just think you're going to get your shot and you act like meandering around practice. Um, Chick has really been in the playbook. He's a Fort Myers boy, so you know I have a vested interest in him. I want to see him do well. He's my homeboy coming from the hometown. And, uh, you can play for me in high school. So I definitely want to see these young men go out there and perform. But they had to get it together at practice before we were able to put them on display for the whole world to see. And both of them came up big. And Chick was darn in tears at halftime. He was just thanking me for giving him an opportunity. I'm like, you earned that, my man. You earned that, and I'm proud of you. So I love those type of stories. Jake, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Jake Schwann, it's DMVR. What's going on, boss? Doing well. How are you doing? Excellent. Uh, how would you describe the connection that Shador and Xavier Weaver have? Shoot, they uh, 
See the stuff that you see on the field, I see it practice. I, I, I saw, I've been saying this for a long time. You know, you, everyone's just getting the opportunity to see it. Um, Xavier, man, is a dog, man. He he is a go-getter. He wants that ball. He high points it. He can get deep. Um, he's great off the jam, great run after catch. He's really a, a return man as well. And the kid loves the game of football. So I promise you, you're going to see a season filled with that because that's the kind of kid he is, and he loves to compete. He loves to compete. Hey, Coach, Eric Christensen from CBS Sports Colorado. How you doing? Yes, sir. How um, you doing? You said the defensive tone for their performance last week. Mm -hmm. You said the theme this week was it's personal. They mm -hmm. played like a unit who really took that to heart. Can you speak a little bit more about their performance? Yeah, I mean, they, they're not happy or satisfied with how they performed last week. That's not indicative to who they were. Coach Kelly called it an excellent game. I'm hearing it on the headset. And, you know, guys got out of their gaps. Um, they just didn't they miss tackles. They just didn't do what they're capable of doing. Uh, <clears throat> but today, early on, I mean, just starting out the game the way they started was phenomenal. And uh, they truly believed that they could be a dominant force. Um, mix in a few more sacks and pressures and keep the quarterback in the pocket. Uh, Coach Kelly went crazy when that guy slipped out of the pocket. The pocket. I wish you could have heard it on the headset. He was about to lose his mind. But uh, overall, they really played well, and we're proud of them. But we still have to fix some things if we want to be who we want to be. Coach Matt Smith, 104.3 The Fan. Could you evaluate Shador's decision making today? Felt like maybe a couple times holding on to the ball, even he admitted it. Yeah, um, you got to understand when Shador holds on to the ball, it's not just he's just holding on to the ball. Somebody probably ran the wrong route or somebody was signal or something happened. He, he never just sits back there to hold on to the darn ball. And, and his read may be here, but you may see a guy wide open over there, but that wasn't his read. They probably blew something, but that was his read. So um, the thing about him, I used to question him all the time, especially coming up in high school and coaching him because I was calling the plays for him. But then when I watched the film, I understand what he's saying. So I've learned to not be, not to not be quick too quick to judge him when I don't see the full picture, because he tells me what's transpiring. Coach Romy Bean, CBS Sports. How you Colorado. doing, girl? I'm doing well. How you doing? Excellent. Well, one thing that seems to continue to stand out is the mental fortitude of this team. I mean, last week it was going toe to toe with TCU. This week it was finding a way to win despite that slow start. Can you just speak on the mental strength of this team? Um, they're mentally tough. I mean, we, we look for the smart, tough, fast, and disciplined young men to fill our locker room and our rosters. And <coughs> the majority of them feature uh, several of those characteristics. I'm proud of them that they, they don't tire. You know, they don't have a pity party. You know, a coach hates to hear the word, my bad, on the sideline. You hate hearing that. but. They're, they're really upset when they know it's their fault and they made a, a tremendous mistake to allow that team another possession. But they're getting it. I mean, they're getting it. It's only our second game in, but they're getting closer and closer with every day of practice and, and every game. I'm proud of them. I really am. Hey, Coach. Brandon Crystal from KOA, your radio partner. It looks like College Game Day may be coming here. Big Noon on Fox is coming back. You said this is new to you. It's certainly new to a lot of folks no, 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 here. No, 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 no. The media ain't new to me. Not the media. The, the, that's coming. College game day hasn't come to Boulder very often. And right. they don't go very many. You know, they can only go 12, 13 places a year. So how satisfying is that that you tell these kids, come here, we're going to build something special, and, and it's coming well, to fruition? Well, we expect it. I know it's, it sounds uh, kind of boastful. It, it sounds uh, at the risk of, of sounding arrogant. Um, we truly expect that. And that's why those kids come. They want the biggest stage, and they're getting that every darn week. And the numbers justify What What numbers did we have last week? Over 7 million? Over 7, million. 7 million viewers on Fox. I think it was their biggest opening day in their history. Um, first game out. So, shoot. I'm pretty sure these numbers are going to justify it as well. College game day just made it official, by the way. Hey, man, you go, girl. You go, girl. <laughs> It's the way to get that. I don't blame him. I, I really don't blame him. I don't blame him one bit. Yes, coach. sir. Oh. Yeah, I check you guys out. Well, you got to understand everybody who's critical of that and saying well, he's going to tire and he's going to do that. And they, shoot, they can't, they can't cook and answer the phone at the same time. 
So, you know, I don't, I don't subscribe to that foolishness because uh, that's who Travis is. Thank you, Pastor Doctor Teacher, my man. That's my pastor. When, I, when your pastor bring you some water, you know you got it going on. <laughs> Love you, Pastor. But Travis is uh he's special. He has a tremendous gift and uh he wants to play. He loves to play. It's six o'clock this morning, probably was five forty five, I get a text. Every every game day, let's go. That's what I get from Travis. Every game day. Let's go. Let's go do this, coach. So I, I love him like he's my son. Uh, I, I treat him like I would uh, if he was my son, but he's a tremendous player. And you got to put him on display and consistently put him on display. He loves to compete. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Pat. Coach, uh, Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. What, uh, what does it tell you about your team that you've won these two games, completely different styles, kind of a, a classic shootout last week. This felt more like a backyard brawl until you pulled away late. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you about your team? What does it mean going forward? Uh, it tells me that we're resilient, that we're tough. I mean, we're, we're, we weren't as disciplined as we normally are early in the game, but uh, we played a smart game, and we just got to start quicker. We got to start quick. We got to come out and let's go. But I'm happy that uh, we had the ball in the second half. That, that's a lot. When you're able to go down and score, then you know you're going to get the ball in the second half. That's like doubling down, and, and I love that. But this team hasn't scratched the surface of what it's capable of doing. We still got some players that are really good players, but they hadn't thrusted themselves into that spotlight yet because of the lack of consistency. But they're going to get it. I truly believe in that. Go ahead, gentlemen. Uh, hey, Coach. Xavier Rolf with Future Sports Broadcasters of America. Um, I'm wondering, was the defense a big focus during the week leading up to the game? The defense is always a focus. We don't just focus on one unit, but they're – always to focus on fixing the things that we were horrible at a week ago. We tried our best to bring resolution to that as well as change personnel so that we'll, we would be better in those areas. But they played their butts off. Okay, just one or two more. Go ahead, Jimmy. Coach, Jimmy Searfoss, 247 Sports. There's a lot of recruits in the building today. What does a win like this in front of these fans say to those who are kind of sitting on the fence? It says ain't hard to find. <laughs> That's what it says. And uh, – the thing about it, you got to recruits analyze everything because I analyze stuff when I was a recruit. recruit. So they sitting out there seeing, understanding their position, saying to themselves, I could do that. I could play for them and I could do that right now. And then the atmosphere on top of that, and you don't have to sell Boulder. Boulder sells itself. So we're not selling anything. We're not promising anything. We're just giving them an opportunity of a tremendous education and uh, a tremendous opportunity to get to the next level, which is the NFL, if they come here and play for us. But uh, it would be tough for me to turn this down if I were a recruit, especially if I'm the parent. Go ahead, Nikki. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Nikki Edwards, CU Sports Report. We saw Bishop Thomas waving his hand in the end zone. We saw Shane Cooks on the offensive line. Yeah. I'm just curious, what went into your decision-making on putting those defensive guys in the offense? They're better blockers than the offensive guys that we had doing it. Because they're, you know, they're grinders. They, they defensive tackle, so they know how to get low. They drive and shoot, they were better. So I said, put them in there. And uh, the formation that we use them in is called Rick Ross. So mm -hmm. when they say Rick Ross, that they, they can, oh, like they ready. So that's what we do. I was hoping Bishop caught the touchdown pass. I, I'm pretty sure we would have got a penalty, but I just wanted to see it. Okay, last one from Mick over there. Hey, Coach, I asked Shador to grade his primetime shuffle after he scored that rushing touchdown. He said it's in his blood, and he gave it a 10 no, out of 10. No, it was horrible. It was horrible. Because he don't kick the feet up. He don't, he, he don't, he don't want it. He, excuse me? No, no, he don't want it. He, he, he don't have – Shador is not a dancer. The only dan – I can't dance either. The only dancer in our family is, is uh, Bossy, my daughter. She's the only one that really has rhythm. The rest of us, we didn't get that. The Lord passed us when it came to dancing. A couple more because I'm feeling good right now. A couple more. Yes, sir. Um, so you talked about the impact the defense had today. Yes, sir. No, oh, they they did a wonderful job. Uh, shoot, is it Icy Breeze, right? What's going? Yep. Isn't that isn't that the company? Icy Breeze. Yep. They did a phenomenal job. First of all, I love what they do, and uh, just to build that throne for the guys to run over to celebrate. They they got it. I, I love stuff like that. I mean, that's what guys want to do. So, I'm all for it 100%. Is it?
Coach, just real quick, your assessment of the running game. I know it looks like you guys are trying we tried. to guys to We tried. We tried. But, I mean, it's hard to be overcritical when I think Shador's, uh, what did he do? I forgot how many yards. I think he had, they didn't even put it on there. Excuse me? 397. No, no passing, no but, passing. but uh, rushing. rushing, yeah. So he added to that, but um, dealing with 55 yards, uh, um, we got to do better. We got to be more physical, especially down in the goal line. And we throw in the darn ball, we run, man, run. And, you know, have an attitude that we could run and, and punch it in. And we got to we got to improve on that. We got to be a lot more physical minded. Yeah. One more, and I'm out. Coach Sean Keeler, the Denver Post. You, you ever been there? Because you talked about this with the field storm and like that before. What was your view of that? And, and I'd seen something no, I hadn't seen. Here. They asked the students no, to never. not come out. They say Coach Prime says don't come out. They all came out. I, I can't believe it. Well, only I seen a club storm one time when I was in the club. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'd never been on the field that was with a storm, you know. There's a lot of storm in the hood where I grew up at. There's a lot of storm at the skate rank. There's all the storm at the end of that every week when you heard gunshots. But that was uh, phenomenal. I didn't get a chance to really see it because the security team was getting me out of there. But I'm pretty sure. And, and by the way, uh, Rick George and, and Peggy got game balls today. And it was phenomenal after the game. And uh, I don't know when we're going to cut it up and put it out. But at the end, Peggy said, Give me my theme music. <laughs> I can't wait till you see that. I can't wait till you see that. So that was wonderful. God bless you. I appreciate you all. See you next week.